is going on Terra Tribe? This is Nate with Terra Fae Exotics and I have to do a little bit of repotting in the greenhouse today and I'm going to be repotting a bunch of philodendrons. Uh, I thought you y'all might be interested in seeing that. I'm going to be up potting these from sphagnum moss to our aeroid mix that you can find on our website if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, link is going to be in the description below. So the pots I'm going to be using are these uh, one gallon pots and we have several different species that we're going to be uh, upgrading today. Uh, one of them is a uh, uh, Eurobescens. We got like an Adiponsii. And I'm going to up pot this uh, Pandaforum as well. Now, when you're up potting from sphagnum to a typical aeroid mix or anything really from a sphagnum mix into a uh, potting mix that it's suited for you're going to want to be somewhat a little bit careful because roots will be attached all throughout that sphagnum so one good tip is to make sure you have enough height clearance tip the pot completely over and squeeze the top like this and that'll help work that plant out sometimes the roots will be stuck to the pot but if you just kind of squeeze the pot it comes right out so I don't know if you can see this, but it, the roots are just flooded through this plant. Uh, we even got a couple of earthworms in here providing some extra uh, worm castings. I'm going to put you on the table real quick, bud, because I'll get you back in the pot. So what you want to do at this point uh, is just slowly massage around the roots, loosening up that sphagnum, making sure to kind of hold on to that main root ball, because uh, with a lot of these cuttings, what can happen is, as you can see, there's only two roots that are really uh, sprouting from this cutting and breaking one of those off could lag out your plant a little bit. So as I'm going around working the root, the root ball just kind of loose from the sphagnum moss. Uh, being, I'm being diligent, but I'm not being too rough on it. Just kind of letting gravity do its own thing while trying to support it at the same time. So there. I don't have all of it off because a lot of these roots are grown right onto the sphagnum moss, but that's all right. When you are repotting from sphagnum moss into a typical potting mix, your roots are going to be more used to um, a lot of water because sphagnum moss is a great water retainer when it comes to decreasing the amount of when you have the water, increasing humidity, things of that nature. So what I like to do is I like to leave a little bit of sphagnum moss on the roots that way, as the roots begin to grow into the new potting mix, it helps with them to adjust better than completely cleaning off all the roots and possibly breaking any roots off of that sphagnum moss. So from here, I filled the pot up about uh, one third of the way. And as you can see, this is a large base. I'm gonna be planting it down to here and also staking it. Uh, you wanna make a nice little dome at the bottom and press down a little bit, uh, just to help make sure that when you give it that first water, you don't lose so much volume out the bottom of the pot that your plant just completely sinks into the pot. I'm going to slowly work this one down in. I'm supporting the plant from the middle section of the plant to help alleviate any wobbling or leaning. And I'm going to just slowly start filling the pot. Once I get a little bit in there, I'm going to carefully work the soilless mix down onto the roots of the plant and continue to add more as we go up. One trick that I really like to do, and you might have seen it there, is as I fill more, what I'm doing is I'm shaking and slowly lifting the uh, plant itself what that's doing is any larger gaps where the roots where the soil wasn't able to get tucked into is slowly falling into there and helping to create uh, a more successfully potted plant after a little bit more shaking I'm just going around and pressing down on the substrate just to help kind of get it a little packed in same thing I'm gonna put some in shake and slowly lift One trick that I've learned, uh, one useful thing that I've learned when it comes to uh, 
the shaking and lifting while you're transplanting is it helps to spread those roots out throughout the pot. Uh, you'll see when you'll see when you get a lot of transplants from like a store or things of that nature, uh, the roots are really tight packed in one location, and that's because they just dig a hole and stick it down inside, and a majority of your root growth is going to be right in that one section where the roots originally started before they begin to expand. But allowing the um, roots to help stretch out as I'm shaking and lifting gives the plant a better chance of being able to fully spread out and venture its roots into the entirety of the pot and just not one specific location. We have just about enough on this and I usually like to leave about a half an inch up by the soil surface. One more little handful here. And the one nice thing about repotting philodendrons, especially once they really start getting a lot of roots on them, is it's okay to go up on that next node. What really happens with that is it just helps to trigger extra root growth. Uh, the same thing would go for, say, if you're a gardener and you're planting tomatoes. Uh, you see one big tip that they do a lot is actually bury some of the stem down in the ground. And what this allows is for more roots to actually grow from the stem and help to anchor the plant into the ground more securely. So this is Eurobescens is all potted up. If you're interested in checking out the product we use today, it is our own homemade aeroid mix. It's on our website. The link is down below in the description. I hope everyone has learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching. Gotta go, gotta grow.